Our last area of study in Algebra 2 for sequences and series is geometric series. Now with geometric series, as mentioned in the last lesson, come in two different types, infinite series and finite series. The formula for finding the sum of a finite geometric series is S sub n is equal to A sub 1 times 1 minus R to the n all divided by 1 minus r. So in order to determine the sum, all you need is the first term, the rate at which they are changing, and how many items are in the sum, in the series altogether. So let's use this to evaluate these two expressions that are shown. We have 1 plus 2 plus 4 plus 8 plus, and continuing on until we get to 128. So Let's find our values. A sub 1 is equal to our first, which is 1. R is equal to the rate at which we move from one term to the next. Well, to move from 1 to 2, 2 to 4, and 4 to 8, we are doubling each time. So R is 2. The last is N. What is N going to be? Well, using our formulas that we have at our disposal from exponential logarithmic sy systems, we have 128 is equal to 1 times 2 to the n minus 1 power. Divide by 1, we have 128 equals 2 to the n minus 1. <coughs> Converting this into logarithmic form, gives us log base 2 of 128 equals n minus 1. Log base 2 of 128 is equal to 7. So 7 equals n minus 1. n equals 8. So we have 8 terms in this series. Now, going through and solving or simplifying fully, we have S sub 8 is equal to 1 times 1 minus 2 to the 8th divided by 1 minus 2. So that's going to give us 2 to the 8th is 256, so we'll have a negative 255 divided by a negative 1, simplifying and carrying out our signs. So the sum of these eight terms is 255. Let's go through that process again, evaluating 3, 6, 12, all added all up to 3072. So again, our a sub 1 is 3. Our r value, how do we move from 3 to 6 and 6 to 12? Again, we are doubling the items. Now n, we're going to have to solve for. So going with it, 3072 is equal to 3 times 2 to the n minus 1. Dividing by 3 gives us 1024 equal to 2 to the n minus 1. So log base 2 of 1024 equals n minus 1. Log base 2 of 1024 is 10. So that equals n minus 1. And n is equal to 11. So now evaluating the sum, we have s sub 11 is equal to 3 times 1 minus 2 to the 11th divided by 1 minus 2. Again, same denominator we had before of a negative 1. Now, 1 minus 2 to the 11th will give us a negative 2047. Multiplying this by 3 and then dividing by negative 1 will give us 
6,141. So there is the sum of these 11 terms. Again, this is simply a matter of following the formula and coming out with the sum. As we go through and work with these, application becomes a big part. So let's look at a application of geometric series from history. Has it that when the inventor of chess showed his new game to the king and explained its purpose was to teach commanders how to fight a war and protect the king at all costs, the king was so impressed that he told the inventor he could have anything he wanted within reason. The man said, place one grain of rice on the first square of the board, two on the second, four on the third, and so on, until the board is full. What was the size of the total payment, and was this reasonable? So, let's go through and solve this. We have A sub 1 is equal to 1, R is equal to 2, and N, a chess board is 8 by 8, so we will have 64 items on the board. So the sum of these 64 items is equal to 1 times 1 minus 2 to the 64th power, all divided by 1 minus 2. So that is equal to 1 times 1 minus 18 quintillion, 446 quadrillion, 744 trillion, 73 billion, 704 million, 551,616, all divided by negative 1. So shortening this up and using scientific notation, it comes out to be roughly 1.84 times 10 to the 19th powers grains of rice. Now, based on what we know about rice cultivation, it would take every single acre of all growable land on the planet Earth about 150 years to grow that much rice. So was this payment reasonable? No, but legend has it that the king agreed because, it, hey, it's just rice. What difference does that make? So when you're dealing with things that are geometric in nature, talking about the series that we are dealing with here, don't be so quick to judge that it is a small amount and not worth really thinking about. So, so far we've looked at finite geometric series. Let's look at infinite. The formula for an infinite geometric series is as follows. S sub n, oh, actually no n on this one, so just s because we don't have a set amount that we're going to. s is equal to our first term divided by 1 minus r. In this case all you need to do is figure out what how quickly r is changing and where you started from. And you can find the sum of some infinite geometric series. And there are two different types. We have convergent and divergent series. Convergent are any series where r, the absolute value of r, is less than 1. And if we have a convergent series, it will have a sum on the infinite systems. A divergent series is where the absolute value of r is greater than or equal to 1. When that rate of change is greater than or equal to 1, what it means is it's going to grow without bounds. So if it grows infinitely, then we can never find the sum of everything that's there. If it's between 0 and 1 for an absolute value, then what we're going to have is something that gets infinitely smaller as it goes along and we'll just fill in a few gaps and come up with an actual sum. So let's take a look at how we can compute some of these. We're going to evaluate the series, all the first two written in sigma notation. First one, where n goes from 1 to infinity of 1 half to the n. 
So what we need to do is go through and figure out our a sub 1 and our r values. Well, a sub 1, if we substitute in a 1 here, 1 half to the first power is 1 half. And our r value, the rate at which we're changing, is we're going to continue to multiply by 1 half. So using our sum formula, s is going to equal 1 half divided by 1 minus 1 half. Well, that's 1 half divided by 1 half, which is simply 1. So if we add up all the half values to each other that go on forever, it will fill one object. Next, we have the sigma of 1 to infinity of 1 half times 3 halves to the n minus 1. Going through and computing this, our first value, if we put in a 1, 1 minus 1 is 0, 3 halves to 0 is 1. We're left with our first value in this series being 1 half, same as it was before. Our r value is the item being raised to the exponent, which is 3 halves. Because 3 halves is greater than 1, the sum does not exist. S does not exist. And when you're dealing with the summing of infinite geometric series, this has possibility. So remember, the r value, the absolute value of r has to be between 0 and 1. Next, we have 1 third minus 1 ninth plus 1 27th minus 1 81st. Our first value, a sub 1, is equal to 1 third. Our r value is equal to a negative 1 third. So our sum, since the absolute value of r is less than 1, our sum is going to equal 1 third divided by 1 minus a negative 1 third. So going through, we have 1 third divided by 1 minus a negative 1 third is 4 thirds. When you divide a fraction by a fraction, you multiply by its reciprocal. So this is 1 third times 3 fourths. The threes will cancel each other out. And we will be left with the simple value of 1 fourth. So if we add a third and then take off a third of that, add a third of that back on, take off a third of it, it will eventually fill up a quarter of an object. So this is how we work with geometric series, both finite and infinite. Formulas are very similar, but has, they have different pieces, different applications. Make sure you have good notes on this, because we're going to be using it moving forward, not only in Algebra 2, but in applications in pre-calculus, calculus, and statistics.